Hello everyone, welcome to Brick Vault. Today we're taking a closer look at one of the most iconic vehicles from all of StarCraft. This is the Battle Cruiser. The custom Lego model was originally designed by the builder Jarek, and it represents one of the most powerful things you can run into on the battlefield in this game. It's big, brutal, overbearing, and always part of the coolest cutscenes in my opinion. Blizzard just has the best cutscenes out of any game company. Now like always, I'm gonna be showing you the cool nitty gritty details of this custom Lego build, its interactive features, and how it handles as a giant brick built model. But before all that, first I wanna say that if you would like to take a stab at building this massive creation for yourself, the building instructions can be found at our web store, www.brickfault.toys. With each purchase comes the PDF step-by-step -step building guide and a digital parts list for uploading and ordering all the pieces that you'll need to make this build happen. Here at the studio we are dedicated to building amazing Lego creations and making it possible for you too to build them too. Anyways, any and all support is always greatly, greatly appreciated because it doesn't just help us do what we want to do here. It also helps support the amazingly talented designers we work with, like Jarek, whose arsenal of top builds basically speaks for themselves. Due to the web store, he and many of the designers we work with have had a lot more time to work on amazing creations. And this one I think is pretty special to him, considering it is the model he's holding in his builder pick. Okay, but back to the Battle Cruiser, this Terran capital ship model measures out to 25 inches long, 64 centimeters, 22 and a quarter inches wide, 51 centimeters, and five and a half inches high, 22 centimeters. That's big at roughly 1 to 1450 scale, though scales aren't really important for the StarCraft games. This ship's footprint is about as wide as it is long while still keeping a decently low profile. Due to its long, thin fins on either side of the ship, resting on the ground without the stand isn't really an option unless you want some bottom chunks to break off. So to make things simpler and stronger, Jarek designed the ship to be permanently connected to its stand. The model has a built-in aggressive lean forward. The ship is canted forward ever so slightly. We've got a primary color of dark bluish gray with the main accent being yellow. The tips of the fins or the ends of the magnetic coils and the openings for the missile bays are done in blue. And I particularly like the brown bar highlights that go along the neck of the ship. Now in universe, this is supposed to be about a kilometer long, maybe two thirds the size of a Star Destroyer. So naturally, the closer you look at this model, the more details you would like to to see small things sticking out here and there in order to make this ship feel like a giant, giant capital ship that has in fact been shrunk down. When a model has so many nice little greebling bits of detail all around, it's hard to become specific, but I think it is worth at least making an effort going through the different sections of this build to show you guys just how sophisticated and subtle some of these connections can be. Starting with the hammerhead shape in the front. This part of the model is made of two semi-symmetrical chunks that are leaning towards each other and ever so slightly stitched together with those little one by two tiles. The Yamato cannon is highlighted in the front and there's also some excellently placed angular cuts into the shape of the head as well, both around the guns, some highlighted in yellow with those cheese wedge pieces and you can also see some screwdrivers and grill pieces that make up antennas and radar dishes on the top. Another detail here that might have remained hidden is the hangers outlined in light bluish gray in the back of the head. And now let's move back to the neck of the ship, which you can see is built of three different separated yellow panels on either the sides or the top. There's some spacing. You can kind of see through this part of the model a little bit here and there, which is supposed to be the case. In game, you can often see some glowing energy stuff kind of moving back and forth in the ship. And detail highlights for me on the neck are the brown bars, as well as the lever pieces inlaid on the sides. Jumping to the main bit of the body in the center. We have a wonderful geometric kind of pattern done in dark gray. Those wing plate pieces match up seamlessly. There's a lot of offset small greebling inlaid, some built-in lettering on the side, which looks excellent. When it comes to any four of the angular fins on either side of the ship, my favorite bit of structural detailing here is the just combination of sloped pieces that make up the tips of the fins, the flag pieces in black that flare out, also 
also have an excellent way of drawing the eye. And I can also appreciate the intentional use of showing the undersides of those one by clips towards the center. Jumping over to the back, the main bit of detailing that I'm going to focus on feels pretty obvious, I should think. The Battlecruiser has four gigantic engines, and the outsides of them have been lined with two different types of tread pieces. Inside, there's a lot of black detailing as well, which is intentional. Different combinations of some gear pieces show just a lot of black, sharp, shiny, round edges. Now, jumping into interactive features, it's, it's short and sweet. All of the guns move. And, and that's it. They're not necessarily play features. You can move them. Some are easier to move than others. I'm trying to do this with like one hand in a lot of these shots, though depending on how stiff a small connection is for one of the guns here or there, I would recommend sort of holding on to some of these pieces and pressing them down as you're turning a gun up or turning it from side to side. But there you go. You can just play around a little bit with how you want these cannons to pose. Also, as some of these shots go by, maybe you can see some cannons that I didn't show you earlier, especially on the bottom in the back underneath the main engines, you can see some cannons. And there's also one right in the center in the front that's just between some of the legs for the uh, stand itself. And now that I'm handling the model already, it's a perfect excuse to get into the handling section of this video. For such a large and oddly shaped spaceship, how does this whole model handle? And the answer is very, very well. It's got a pretty strong Technic frame that cuts through the entire body of the ship. So moving it around has been extremely casual. You can see I'm just spinning it in circles here first. For any large spaceship, I would always recommend spinning a ship by its stand. But honestly, I haven't really noticed a difference when I switch over to just pushing this model around by any of its extremities. Before I pick it up, I'm just going to start pulling on some of the main chunks, like some of the side fins. There's a few larger sub-assemblies that you can break away if you're really trying to do it, but I'm happy to say that none of the small, weak-looking greebling is particularly easy to knock off. Usually I've got my hand somewhere behind the stand and somewhere on the neck when I pick up the model, and though I don't generally recommend it, I can pick up the model by the wings close to the body. You can hear a little bit of bricks creaking here and there when I do it, so it's like, what's the point? The model has so many big, easy points to grab it from, so I just sort of stick to the center and you're watching a video of me doing this for the first time, but Jarek does tell me that you can stand the model up on the engines, and I believe it. So let's just see how well that works. You're seeing a first attempt right now. And because I recorded this part of the video before I recorded the actual handling section, let's just assume it worked out perfectly, and I gave you a nice big thumbs up. Now, before I get into my final thoughts for the model, first, I do want to show you these two little guys. We've got a couple of mutas. The design for them is actually really awesome. I think they scale extremely well, and the details at this size are captured really well. But I will say there is a caveat. The uh, studio file is included for a purchase, but not the instructions, and that's because these little one by ones here in reddish brown don't actually connect very well consistently. We bought enough pieces to build three mutas and only had enough workable pieces to actually make two of the builds stick together properly. I think they look awesome though when they're attached to the side of the ship. Looks like they're attacking it. So just be cautioned, uh, you can try to build these on your own, but reddish brown is finicky in more than just one way. They don't just break on accident sometimes easier than other colors, but also fitting them together in this weird illegal technique reveals that they have odd tension differentiations that just make it not possible for this particular color. Not all the time at least. Anyways, that is going to be it for the battle cruiser. I was pleasantly surprised at how easily this model came together and also how strong it stays together. If you did want to build this model for yourself, remember the instructions can be found at our web store, www.brickfault.toys. Any and all support is always greatly, greatly appreciated. You can always like, subscribe, share the video with somebody that likes StarCraft. Of course, suggestions for what types of videos you'd like to see us do in the future are always welcome. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah.